Welcome to the Risk Forever channel guys. The channel which shares the most relevant tips and tricks on how to win at risk, and improve your rank in no time. Subscribe to the channel and you won't even see how fast you will become so much better at risk. Push that notification bell to see new videos first. This is your host champion ever. And today we are playing 6 player fixed card game on classic risk map. Settings, Alliance is on. Balance Blitz dice rolls in 60 seconds per turn. This time I'm playing against 3 beginner rank players who are purple, green and orange, 1 intermediate rank player who is yellow, and even 1 expert rank player who is blue. I've got a bunch of low rank players in this game, so I'm wondering how it will go this time. As always wish me best of luck guys, keep your fingers crossed for me. Select one of the players and root for them. Let the game begin. As of now I'm not really sure what I should do, it seems I might be without a continent at all, but who knows. I added my troops to Africa cause I think it's the most beneficial to have my troops there in the state of moment. The blue player seems to be desperate for South America, and the orange player seems to be desperate of going for Africa, so there is a possibility that one of them clear out a continent for me without even realizing it. Also someone might go for Australia clearing out the troops, so I'm considering this option too. So I'm just waiting to see what players will be up to, if anything I can always move to Asia and build my troops into one big army. It is my backup plan in the worst case scenario. Well, you know what guys, you know what? I will actually go for Australia. To be honest I'm amazed that nobody is going for it. Usually Australia is the most wanted continent and at least few players always compete for it when it comes to the games with low rank players. They drastically crush each other troops and the lucky one gets to hold it, while the unfortunate one loses the game, or sometimes they just clear out the continent for someone else low. So this is why I didn't add my troops to it in my first turn, I thought that someone will definitely be going for it so why I should have risked losing additional troops when my situation already wasn't ideal at all, I didn't want to potentially get taken out first. But since nobody is going for Australia as you can see, I will definitely take that opportunity myself. That's for sure. Since I made alliance with Blue and since he is going for South America while the orange player for Africa, I think nobody will prevent me of getting it. Well, I kinda afraid of the yellow player though, he is floating in Asia and can always change his plans to go for Australia, so I will crush Orange's 4 troops only when I will be confident that I will be able to successfully hold it. I don't want to risk of the yellow player having a 10 troop set at 3 cards, potentially clearing me out of it. Or any other player doing the same. I just want to be safe. Anyways. The blue player just captured South America and the green player Europe. The purple player moved his troops out of blue player's border so I guess they made an alliance. I'm pretty sure the blue player will be safely holding South America if he doesn't make any stupid attacks. But when it comes to green player, the situation is kinda worse. Europe has even 4 borders and it's extremely hard to hold it. So that is a good question if the green player will be able to hold it. Like the purple player already tried to invade him, unsuccessfully though, but I'm wondering what about other players, the green player doesn't have a big army which would deter others of invading him. So it's all about other players generosity, if he made alliances with other players then he might hold it, if not, then he most likely won't. And lol, the orange player just invaded him. That is so nice. I like when players make the conflicts between them, while I completely can stay away from them, either by turning in some continent, or putting my troops into one big army somewhere else in a neutral place, which would intimidate any of the players. Anyways, you're probably wondering why I didn't turn in a set and didn't capture Australia, as I completely could. Well, this is because I'm planning to take the yellow player out. I couldn't do that in the last turn because I wouldn't have been able to turn in a set in the same turn and I would have been in quite danger. Especially I was afraid of the orange player since he already had some troops in Australia and a big army in Africa which is very close to Australia. I was afraid of the green player too, but he already traded in a set and used it to attack purple leaving his army in North America, so I don't think he is a threat for me anymore. 
I still kinda afraid of the orange player though, so I'm wondering if he captures Africa splitting his army in three equal pieces, if he does so, then I will consider taking the yellow player out for five cards. But as you can see he didn't do that, so I will play completely safe and just capture Australia, whatever, let's keep the yellow player alive. I wouldn't have been guaranteed taking the yellow player anyways, that would have been a quite risky blitz roll, and even if I had taken the yellow player successfully out, I still could have gotten a 4 troop set low. So basically that was too much risk, considering I could have simply taken Australia and successfully hold it. And as you can see I did that. I will be using the best risk strategy ever, the Australian turtle strategy, which one's principles are simple, you just basically build your troops to one big army guarding Australia, and do nothing else, besides capturing a territory per turn to get a card. And all of that is basically called turtling. You just build your troops and wait till other opponents destroy each other too much till you have more troops than all of them combined, so then you will be able to wipe them out and win the game. It's simple. The strategy especially works very well when you play with low rank players, like beginners and novices, they don't know much about the balance of the game, they don't know much about the diplomacy as well, so they perfectly deal with themselves and don't even notice that. And since Australia has only one entry point and is very easy to hold, you will be safe. Well, if you play with higher rank players then you could be eliminated by a player who holds North America or Europe so that player could become turtle by himself. But when it comes to low rank players, they don't realize that opportunity at all, they just tend to attack any players they have borders with, or players they didn't like for some reasons. Like look at the purple and green players for example. Total beginners. They keep attacking each other wasting their troops while they could simply make an alliance instead, and at the same time stop the conflict between them. But no they will keep attacking each other low. But don't get me wrong guys, I really like it, I would rather see them destroying each other instead of holding these two big continents which would give a lot of troops to them. And this is why I actually prefer to play with low rank players rather than high rank players when it comes to 6 player fixed card games. Believe me you don't want such games, most of the times the high rank players just turtle in their continents and the game becomes a stalemate. None of the players can do any bigger or crazier attacks because they know if they start attacking someone first, then most likely they will be one of the players to be eliminated first, so nobody does anything until someone disconnects or so, or like someone starts doing something but at most times these initiative showing players are being eliminated first low. Well, sometimes they increase their advantage if other players continue being very passive, but at most cases they won't if some player took additional content of taking someone out at the same time weakening himself a lot, while there are already many players left in the game. In such cases if you weaken yourself a lot, then there are big odds that you will be eliminated next. So anyways, since the purple and green players continue so much drastically attacking each other, I wouldn't be surprised that one of them, or even both of them will be eliminated first. Actually make a prediction in the poll guys, guessing which player will be eliminated first, I'm really wondering how many of you will be right. Probably it will be purple, but there's possibility that the green could be the one as well. Well, the green player apparently has a set, and it seems he is going for purple. So yeah, congrats to those who guessed purple, you were right. To be honest I was considering taking the purple player out by myself, he was so weak and I totally could afford taking him out, but I mean I didn't want to potentially become weaker than yellow. He is floating in Asia and I'm not sure what his plans are, maybe he is just a smart passive player who just builds a big army in one place and wouldn't like to irritate anyone, but maybe he would like to take Australia from me. Of course that's would be stupid as he basically would kill both of us, but I saw many low rank players doing so, so I just want to be completely safe. And very nice guys, I really like the fact that the blue player invaded green into North America, as it would have been very dumb for players to let green hold both of the continents. He would have grown so strong. But to be honest it would be so great that someone would invade green into Europe as well, I want that as many players would be gone from the game as possible. And lol green seriously, the blue player invaded you into North America, 
but he gladly let you keep Europe, and now seriously you want to intimidate him by fortifying your biggest army into North America? To be honest I doubt it is going to work. And the orange player just confirmed that. You could have safely continued turtling in Europe getting 5 extra troops per turn and eventually becoming the strongest player assuming the blue player wouldn't have captured North America. But now you cannot really do anything about it seems. Well, you can still try either capturing North America or recapturing Europe, but it will really depend on the player's generosity, if they want they could absolutely prevent of holding any continent. But who knows, maybe they would be afraid of your biggest army. You seem to be an aggressive player, while the yellow player is totally passive, while blue and orange player seems to be in between. So they might let you hold North America but who knows. Chances of you holding Europe have gone already. The yellow player already showed that he won't let recapture Europe for the green player, he will be going for it by himself it seems. The green player has really worsened his situation by deciding to pull his troops out of Europe to North America to potentially intimidate the blue player, his decision really unflavored him, so now he sits with no continent at all. And that's kinda bad for him considering he could have just simply held Europe. Well, not everything has been lost yet. He just captured North America, and maybe he will be successfully holding it. Maybe. But maybe not. I guess the green player by leaving his biggest army next to blue's border should really irritate blue. So the blue player could just simply decide to blitz the green player's army, thinking that if he won't do that, then the green player is going to crush him by himself then. Well, maybe the blue player decides to use the South American turtle strategy, the strategy in which you move your troops out from your borders away, leaving them unguarded, and putting your troops to one big army in Peru territory. So you won't threaten your opponents and at the same time be able to successfully hold South America since players will be afraid to invade you because of your big army. But you should of course make an alliance with North American and African players first, well it might work without alliances if you play with higher ranked players, but if you play with low ranked ones, then it's better to make an alliance with them, so you will be sure they won't attack you. Alright. It seems that the blue player have chosen to be aggressive instead and invaded the green player into North America. Which I would say was a great decision too, because if the blue player would have let him hold North America, then the green player eventually would have become so much stronger than the blue player, so possibly the green player would have had decided to take him out if so. Judging by the fact that the green player tends to be aggressive and picks and focuses on the opponents which he got attacked by, and the blue player was one of them. So I would say the better odds for blue player to win the game is by not letting the green player hold North America so the green player wouldn't become stronger than him and possibly wouldn't decide to eliminate blue later on in this game. And it seems the plan of being aggressive has paid off for the blue player. The green player got scared and moved out his army away of the blue player's border. So that's good for blue, and not that good for green since he won't be able to hold North America. But I mean the green player is still quite strong and can still win the game even without having a continent at all, you can still survive and even when having no continent, even though you have the highest odds of getting eliminated next being the weakest player, but I mean it's more about who players decide to attack to, or sometimes even suicide on. So even though the green player isn't in the best situation ever, he can still win the game, and the same goes with every and each of the players. Like nobody became too strong to dominate the game. The game is being kept balanced. Anyways, the green player just recaptured North America, he kept his army far away from blue, showing that he would like to end the conflict between them. So I'm really wondering if the blue player will still be attacking him. And yes, he still keeps attacking him. And that's good. It probably wouldn't be the best idea for the blue player to let the green player grow strong. And lol, the green player just fortified his biggest army next to blue's army again. To be honest I don't think it's a great idea as it can end up very wrong to him. It would have only been a great idea only if the green had a bigger army than blue's one, so the blue player would get potentially scared and bail out. But since the green player has a smaller army, he probably will get blitzed by him. The blue player knows, that if he won't attack green, 
then Green will surpass him on troops and eliminate him instead. At least that's how I think the blue player is thinking. But who knows? Maybe he will actually decide to bail out and use South American Turtle's strategy. But I doubt, he was very aggressive towards attacking Green. So my inner voice says that the Green player is about to get crushed. And this is why I'm keeping my army and block towards North America's side, if anything I could finish taking the Green player out or so, if the Blue player wouldn't completely take him out, but just simply blitz Green's big army. Or actually I could take both of them out, if the blue player loses a lot of troops. That would be absolutely great to get rid of both of the players at once for sure. And very nice, thank you blue for blitzing green. If the green player doesn't have a set, then he is basically dead. And he doesn't. So I'm pretty sure he will definitely be taken out. Will the yellow player eliminate him? Let's see. No, he is just getting a card. But what about the orange player? Come on take the green player out orange. Well okay, it's actually very good that they keeping the green player for me, I will increase my territorial troop bonus for a little bit. Also I'm really wondering if they will be dumb enough to let me hold North America low. Probably they won't, but whatever. I will be very satisfied of continuing using the Australian turtle strategy. Watching the world burn, well, not right now, but eventually for sure. Well, unless someone would decide to take me out. Like the yellow player eventually could, or even the blue player assuming he captures both of the Americas and successfully holds them for multiple turns. And to be honest this is the way to counter Australian turtle strategy, if you have like North America or Europe, then eventually you become stronger than Australian turtle player, so you can take him out, and become the Australian turtle by yourself. But when you take that Australian turtle player out, always make sure that you have much more troops than him, you want to make sure that you can afford taking him out, like you wouldn't like to get straightly taken out after you took that player out. Right? So be reasonable with it. And especially make sure that the balance of the game will be sustained, like even though sometimes you can afford taking that player out, doesn't always mean that it's a great move. Like after taking any of the players out, you wouldn't like that someone would become very strong compared to others, you don't want that someone would start dominating the game. Always make sure to follow players troops, you don't want that someone would have the same number of troops as other combined, or even more of the troops. As the player who has the same number of troops combined can just simply eliminate all of the players and win the game. So you certainly don't want that situation would end up like this. So always be reasonable and know when it's worth to attack and when it's not, even if you have some bigger conflicts with any of the players. Anyways, after taking the green player out, I was really wondering if I should take the blue player out as well, as I completely could. The only thought which was stopping me away was that I didn't want to appear to be low on troops, potentially stupidly getting taken out like by the orange player for example. Like he doesn't equally add his troops on all of his armies, he mostly adds his troops to the Middle East army which is the only army which could reach me. So I was afraid of the orange player doing something crazy to me. So this is why I didn't take the blue player out as well. Well, I mean the blue player was the only player I had alliance with, but that doesn't matter at all, alliances don't really mean much when you play with smart players. Alliances are just usually being made like as an agreement that you won't attack each other continents and that's it. And it seems the blue player made an alliance with me just for that as well. So it doesn't really matter to me if he stays in the game or not. The only time when I want to keep my allies in the game at any cost, even if I could easily take them out, is when they stupidly take my alliance too seriously and do all of the dirty work for me, like crushing my opponents like crazy or only focusing on attacking my opponents, while leaving their troops away from my border, but guarding against other players. This kind of players can help you and buy a lot, so you want to keep good relationships with them during the entire game. Well, the blue player keeps attacking the yellow player, but on the other hand he doesn't guard against the orange player at all, and the orange player basically doesn't guard against him as well. And that indicates me that the blue player probably made the alliance with the orange player as well. 
So this is why the yellow player becomes the player with which I would like to be in the top 3. The orange player has a strong alliance with the blue player, so it will be much harder for me to win if the yellow player would be eliminated first, rather than orange or blue. The orange player already seem doesn't really like me by building his huge army in the Middle East which really threatens me, and this is why I moved my biggest army back in Australia, or if we say in other words I made that army blocked, so the orange player wouldn't think that I'm building this army to attack him. It was probably a mistake for me to keep my army unblocked back then, as it probably really irritated the orange player, but I mean I didn't want to keep that army blocked as so I would be able to take out any players out if needed, or like of get an opportunity to take the game into my hands somehow. But actually it ended up scaring orange so my plan didn't end up very well. Anyways, I'm really wondering what the orange player is going to do when he will become blocked of attacking of any of my territories, will he be dumb to attack either yellow or blue into continent, or will he just simply fortify some troops to take down one of my armies? I cannot wait to see. I will fortify my Australian army to Siam territory in the next turn, so the orange player will become totally blocked of attacking me. And OMG guys, OMG guys. I cannot believe that the blue player actually fortified his whole army next to yellow's border. Is he actually planning to suicide on him? Hmm. That would be so great. It couldn't be better when players are suiciding on each other at the same time increasing your chances to win. And oh god guys, wait, doesn't matter. I literally thought that the orange player is going to fortify his whole 100 troops army on Siam to suicide on me. I was so scared at that moment. But fortunately for me, he just misclicked on his armies, he actually just wanted to fortify his 5 troops back to his biggest army back low. And oh wow guys, the blue player actually invaded the yellow player into his continent low. That is so good. I love when players fighting. Well, I'm just not sure why the yellow player didn't fortify any troops to Iceland territory, as the blue player most likely will invade him again. He at least could have fortified like 20 troops, if he didn't want to fortify his whole 50 troops army if he potentially scared of getting invaded by the orange player. Well, maybe he doesn't fight with the blue player anymore, he wouldn't like that the conflict would start even bigger, he wouldn't like that they both would destroy each other so much, that someone would be able to take both of them out. But wow, the yellow's plan hasn't worked out. The blue player tends to be aggressive and he will not let the yellow player to go away with it. He wants to encourage the conflict. What I don't consider is a great idea, judging by the fact he is the weakest player, and could be taken by any all of us out. Like the orange player could fortify his biggest 100 plus troops army to North America and take him out. And I could take the blue player out as well, but that would made the orange player as the strongest player, and it seems he already doesn't really like me, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to hold Australia anymore and continue using my Australian turtle strategy. So I'm not taking the blue player out. To be honest I don't consider taking any of the players out. Neither blue or yellow, as they are already hate each other so much and probably deal with each other by themselves, nor the orange player, as obviously he is stronger than me so I don't have enough troops, but if I had an opportunity to take him out, then I would do so. As long as after taking him out I would be sure to survive, and if it wouldn't break the balance of the game. My biggest focus right now, is to get the same number of troops as the orange player, so in case the yellow and blue players destroy themselves too much, I wouldn't be in the troops disadvantage towards the orange player. As you know Africa gives 3 troops while Australia only 2. So to cover the one additional troop the orange player gets each turn, I captured many territories in Asia, having over 12 territories gives me one extra troop, which make me equal with the orange player. Well, getting one troop less than your opponent doesn't seem like a big disadvantage at all judging by the first sight. But actually turn after turn you cannot even notice on how much your opponent became stronger than you, and when the game becomes in stalemate situation as of now, there is going to be a lot of turns. So it's better to be on the safe side considering nobody is going to attack the orange player. Yellow and blue are busy with each other, 
but I mean even if they would like to attack the orange player, they still wouldn't dare to do that, the orange player's biggest army should really be discouraging them of doing that. And lol guys. My plan of blocking the orange player of capturing territories has worked out well, I really wanted to block him all this time, so either he would be forced to stop attacking and getting cards, or attack directly to either blue's or yellow's continent, and that finally worked out, the orange player invaded yellow, so now the yellow player won't be getting even 5 extra troops per turn. Plus the orange player kinda made the yellow player as his enemy, so in the case the blue player will be out of the game first, that will possibly favor me, the orange and yellow player being enemies. And wow, what have just happened guys, lol. At first, the blue player stupidly fortified his biggest army next to yellow's biggest ones, like showing that he is going to suicide on him, so the yellow player got freaked out and captured South America from him, putting his troops into middle of it, in the Peru territory, possibly using South American turtle strategy, but the biggest question is, are these players still going to attack each other? And yes, the yellow player seems to be mad on blue, but I mean why would he be satisfied of changing the positions with the blue player, to get 3 troops less than him? So fair enough. And OMG guys. I cannot believe that the orange player invaded yellow into his continent, rather than attacking a territory in already invaded Blues Europe. I think that just proves that the orange player has a very strong alliance with the blue player. And that is so bad, you don't want that any of the players would have such a strong alliance that they would never attack each other and would focus on attacking others only. In such cases you want to seek of getting eliminated one of them if possible, if you can afford that, as otherwise it could really go very wrong for you. Like you wouldn't like that these two players would team up on you when there are only three of you left. So I think my biggest odds to win if I keep the yellow player in the top three, like I wouldn't like that he would get eliminated first, so my aim would be to seek of getting rid either a blue or orange player first. Possibly orange, as I kinda have an alliance with blue and we tend to stay neutral towards each other, while the orange player threatens me of having his very big army so close to me and probably would like to get rid of me as well. And wow guys, the orange player didn't attack the blue player into Europe in his turn again, he decided to skip it, and fortify tons of troops next to yellow's border instead. So I think I have seen enough, now I'm totally sure that the orange and blue player have a strong alliance with each other. And wow, the blue player even fortified his biggest army next to yellow's border as well. That is very strange I have to admit the least. Like why blue player would do that being quite weaker than yellow lol. But whatever, let's see what is going to happen. I'm mostly interested to see what the yellow player is going to do. Will he invade the blue player again, decide to be without a continent at all, or what are his plans? But lol, orange and blue. Both of these players fortified their troops back. La la la. And OMG guys. I cannot believe what is happening. The yellow player decided to end this for good. He had enough of blue messing up with him. The blues days became over. Whether it was a great decision for the yellow player I don't know, he almost completely destroyed himself. So the orange player can afford taking him out. To be honest the orange player could even win this game easily. As he has the same number of troops as me and yellow player combined, so he could take both of us out, the yellow player has even 5 cards so the orange player would even regain some of the troops and timer for him would be reset by 30 seconds. He probably wouldn't finish taking me out, but at least he could take my biggest army down getting an extremely good blitz roll since the attackers get a really good advantage towards the defenders, and especially when it comes to very big armies. But as you can see he didn't take that chance to win. So I'm really wondering if I have to take that chance by myself, but I mean it still doesn't really worth for me taking the yellow player out, as it would even make me weaker towards the orange player when I already have like 30 troops less than him. But on the other hand since I need to attack a lot of armies, I might equalize my troop ratio with the orange player, but most likely only equalize. So the chances for me to win will become kinda equal with him, and I'm not sure if I have to take that risk. Well, let's go guys. 
I might even end up losing this game, but I think it's worth the risk. After taking the yellow player out, the timer will be reset by 30 seconds, so I will get the territorial advantage over the orange player for sure. But the biggest question is, how our troops ratio is going to look like. It's the end game time guys. And the luck is needed more than ever ever before. I think it is going to be close. Let's see guys. The orange player has 84 troops while I'm even 100. But on the other hand he will get some good blitz rolls blitzing my armies, so most likely he will be ahead. But at least I should sustain my territorial advantage, for at least a couple more turns. Wow, these blitz rolls are killing me guys. Well, at least he ran out of time invading Australia and that's a really good sign for me. And I was so fortunate to get a 10 troop set. All I need to do, is to continue capturing as many territories as possible, in doing so I will increase my troop bonus advantage and decrease oranges one. As remember guys, the more territories you have, the more troops you get, and the less territories your opponent has, the less troops he gets. So I have to sustain my territorial advantage if I want to win. Well, the orange player can still win if he successfully captures and holds some continents. But as you can see he didn't, like he totally could split his biggest army to guard South America, instead of capturing one or two territories more. Also he should have started of invading Australia, but since he didn't, he ran out of time, and having Australia gave me even two extra troops. He was smart to invade Australia this turn though, but why in the world after invading Australia he straightly skipped his turn, without even invading South America or capturing as many territories as possible? Like why, like why in the world? That's unexplainable. He completely lost his chances to win after that, giving me a huge advantage over him. Well, I would say he gave up. But as you can see he is still trying his best, invading all of these continents and capturing as many territories as possible. So I think it must have been an accident, as it made no sense for him to skip his turn. Well anyways, let's finish him off guys. But wow guys, that game lasted so long. It took a lot of patience sitting in Australia and doing absolutely nothing during the entire game, in end game taking risky opportunity and successfully managing to beat my stronger opponent. Isn't Australian turtle strategy is one of the best strategies ever, well, at least when it comes to playing low rank players. Hmm. Well, I will leave it up to every and each of you to decide. Special shout out goes to the members of the Risk Forever channel. Thank you very much for supporting me. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then I would recommend to check out some of these as well. Which video are you going to watch next? Click on the one you like.